Hello friends, my name is AJ and welcome to my channel. This is your in-depth review for unit four of AP Computer Science, which is iteration. Iteration is one of the most important aspects of AP Computer Science, as well as programming in general, no matter what language you use. Iteration is also one of the biggest components of the AP exam. So it's very important that you know and will be able to use iteration in your programs as well as be able to answer multiple choice questions on it. Now for the AP exam in 2020, uh, because of the um, coronavirus pandemic, we don't actually, we will only have a FRQ section or a free response section on this test. However, in future years, there will most likely be multiple choice questions. And a lot of the multiple choice questions, I would say a very, very vast majority of the questions may include iteration in them. So it's very important to be able to understand this topic. All right, so without further ado, let's get started on iteration. All right, so the first thing is iteration, obviously, is the name of the unit, but it is a very important vocabulary term. So what does iteration actually mean? Well, iteration refers to the repetition, repetition of a process, right? So it is basically taking a process or code or a block of code or an algorithm and repeating it over and over again. So why would iteration actually be useful? Well, we can use iteration to repeat code to make it mo both more concise, uh, concise and less repetitive. Let me show you an example. So below I have an algorithm and this algorithm is used to make a square. So let's say I have a, um, a specific item here, or let's just say a marble for this example. My algorithm, first the first line you move forward, then you turn left, you move forward. Let me draw that a little bit better. You move forward, right? And then you turn left, you move forward like this, and then you turn left and then you move forward again. You move forward again. So that draws a square, right? However, if you notice in this particular, um, in this particular algorithm, there are a lot of times where code actually repeats. For example, this block or this um, process of turning left and moving forward repeats three different times. And the code is not as concise because it's, it's long and it may be, it's very repetitive in this case. We have three instances of the exact same in, in sequence, right? The same order of actual processes. So using iteration, right? The idea of repeating processes, we can actually make this code much more concise. So if I were to make it more concise using iteration, the first thing I could do is I could do move forward, right? Because that is the first part here, right up here, which is not part of any repetitions, right? And then what we could do is we could say repeat, right? And because I, I use this block of code three times, I can repeat it three times. So repeat three times, right? And then inside of this repeating block, I can put turn left and move forward. And you can see that I took a program that was really long and had a lot of repetitions. And then I was able to convert it over to a program here that does not have a lot of repetition at all. It is much more concise and it's easy to read. I know that this particular process, turn left and move forward, will repeat three times instead of trying to discern it from a long list of, of actual functions here. That is an example of using iteration to make an algorithm more concise and less repetitive. Now also it's important to know this is, um, on this side here, this is pseudocode, so it's not actually code. This repeat three times, I'm just using to show you that if I were to repeat those things, or if I was to create a code mechanism that repeated it three times, this is what it would look like. And we're going to learn about the specific structure that allows us to repeat code right now. So what we use to repeat code, 
right, as a code structure that we can use to repeat code is called a loop. Right, they're called loops. And loops are, again, very important. They're a very, very um, essential thing for programming and also for computer science. So what are loops? Loops are, again, code structures that allow us to repeat processes, right? And again, this thing, repeat processes, it basically allows us to iterate, right? The verb form of the noun iteration. We are going to be able to use loops, these code structures, to actually iterate. And there are two main types of loops. And the first type I'm going to be going over is the while loop, right? The while loop. While loop. And what are while loops? Well, while loops, they repeat code. They repeat code while, again, that keyword here, while a certain condition, a certain condition is true. They allow us to repeat code while a certain condition is true true. Now, it's very uh, important to think about what we mean by condition here. If you remember from the last unit, when we created if statements and um, if else statements, we also had conditions after the keyword if, right? So if statements basically ran a certain code if a certain condition was true. In this case, we are repeating code while that condition remains to be true. And just like with if statements, the conditions that we use are going to be Boolean expressions. Boolean expressions here. And Boolean expressions, remember, Boolean expressions always evaluates, right, evaluates to either true or false, just like that. And we use those relational operators that you remember. We use the um, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, um, less than or equal to, equals, not equals. We use the logic operator such as the and operator and the or operator and the not operator. All of those that were used in the previous unit for Boolean expressions can also be used inside of the conditions for loops. So let's look at what a while loop actually looks like. So the first thing you have here is you have the while keyword, very similar to the if statement where you had the keyword and then you had parentheses after it. And inside of those parentheses goes your condition, right? So you have your while loop or you have the while keyword here, which basically identifies this code structure as a while loop. And then you have your condition and you remember your condition is going to be a Boolean expression, right? And then you have an open, an open curly brace and a closed curly brace. And remember, these are linked together, showing the opening and the closing of the actual code structure. So what this basically shows is that the code inside of here will repeat continuously while this condition is true. And it will stop repeating when that condition is no longer true. All right. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you an example. Right, so here I have a Boolean that is named has internet. And basically what this Boolean is going to store is whether or not, right, yes or no, true or false, because Booleans are binary choices. If you remember from unit one, it either specifies, you know, um, yes or no, true or false. So right now the Boolean is going to be showing whether or not the person has internet. And right now it is set to false. And then here is the while loop. And the while loop, remember, if I highlight here, it goes from here, this open curly brace, to this closed brace. So everything inside of there is part of the loop and will continuously repeat until the condition is true, or until the condition is false. It, it keeps repeating while the condition is true. So if you look here, it says while has internet is equal to false. And if you look over here, it is equal to false. So that means that the code inside the loop can run for the first time. And then I have a Boolean that says 
um, a boolean named flag, right, which is equal to this function I, I made called check internet. That basically returns true if there is internet and false if there is not internet, right? So I am this is but this is um, extra abstracted out. So you didn't actually see the contents of this function, but I'm telling you or this method, but I'm telling you what it actually does, right? And what it does is it checks whether or not there is or is not internet. And so the result of check internet is stored into the flag variable. And then here I say, if flag is true, then I say has internet. Remember my function up here, I set that equal to true. And then I print out some um, something into the log. And if the flag is not true, right, because else, basically meaning that if there was no internet, you're going to simply print out something, right? So let's imagine, let's imagine for now that my check internet returned false. That returned false. What's going to happen is it's going to go then to this if statement. If flag is equal to true, then you're going to run this code. But because flag is set to false, I will skip the body of the um, if statement. And actually, now that I look at this, this should probably have an open and a closed um, brace to that because it's it cannot be a one line if statement um, because there are two lines inside of the if statement. There's a little bit of logic error there, so I just fixed that really quickly. But because this is false, I skip the body of the if statement and I go to the else statement, right? And then I print out something to the log. But then after I print out something to the log, I reach the end of my while loop. And then I go back to the top because remember, the loops, they keep going around. They keep repeating over and over again. And I now go back to the while loop. And now the condition again is has is the has internet variable equals false. And that is true. And because it's true, the loop continues again. Remember, it continues going until this condition evaluates to false. In this case, it evaluates to true. So I'm going to do the entire process inside of here again. And then just for, um, for the sake of ending this loop, let's say this variable here, flag, becomes true, right? Now what's going to happen is the if statement is going to run because the condition is flag equals true. And now that flag equals true, that condition is, is valid, right? So then the first thing I have here is has internet becomes true. So now up here, this value is changed from false to true. And then I print something in my log, right? And then because um, there's an else, else statement here, we skip it because we, we did the code inside the if statement. So we go and we reach the end of the loop. Then from the end of the loop, we can go back to the beginning of the loop and we can check the condition. But this time, my variable has internet is equal to true. Therefore, true, right? True equals false. That is not true right? True does not equal false. So in this case, the condition, the overall condition, this is no longer true. And because the overall condition is no longer true, the loop stops running. So that's kind of an explanation of how a loop continues and it, how it keeps continuing while the condition is true. And eventually that condition, in order for the loop to stop uh, repeating, the condition will have to change from true to false false. If you leave the while loop as true, if you leave the condition in the while loop as true and it never changes, then you're going to have what is called as a um, infinite loop, right? An infinite loop. It basically keeps repeating over and over and over again with no end because the condition that you put in will always evaluate to true, right? And that's something you definitely want to avoid because that will pretty much break your program. Because if you're repeating a process over and over and over again without any end, there is going bound to be a problem there. So you want to make sure that your conditions, that if you are using a variable in your condition, such as a Boolean like has internet in this case, there has to be some case inside or some way that it changes from true to false so that your loop can stop executing at some 
point because you want to avoid a, a infinite loop. Now, another, another thing that I actually want to address also with loops is what if initially, when I first get to the loop the first time, the condition is false? Then what do you do? Well, in this case, your loop actually does not run. So if your loop, if you reach the loop and the condition is false, the loop is skipped over and it's not run because it repeats zero times in this case. And then once it is true, or once the condition is true, it will then repeat, repeat until it is false. So it's very important to remember that if your condition is initially false, then your, then your actual loop, what's inside of your loop is not going to run. Okay. Now we looked at that where we looked at repeating using a loop to repeat um, while a certain condition is true. Now, and um, there is no actual specified number of times that this while loop repeated. But what if I want to specify a certain amount of times that I want the loop to repeat? Let's say I want it to repeat only five times or repeat only 10 times. Well, there is another way that we can do this, and that is using this example. With this example, you create what is known as a counter variable. This variable will keep track of the number of times your loop iterates or repeats. And it starts out with zero. And then here, inside of the while loop, I can have a condition. A condition for when or the certain number that the actual counter variable should hit before it stops running or stops repeating. So in this case, my counter variable starts out as zero. But then my condition is that this code repeats while the counter variable is less than five, which basically means that the counter needs to increase every time the while loop runs so that by the time that you hit the number five, the loop no longer runs and it in the end only runs five times. So the last thing you actually have to do and to make sure that this works is you have to have an increment. Let me make this a little bit neater here. An increment for the counter variable or basically how much this counter variable increases by each time your loop actually runs. So in this case, my initial, right? My initial value of I is zero. But then when I run the loop the first time, it goes and changes to one. When I run the loop the second time, it changes to two. When I run the loop the third, right, it becomes three and then four, right? And once I hit five here, is five less than five? It isn't, so then the loop stops running. And then at this point, I have run my loop a total of five times, right? The first time with zero, then one, then two, then three, and then four. So that is why it is very important that you, that you do not forget all of these three components. If you want to increase or you want to do a while loop for a certain number of times, you have to have all three of these components. And there is oftentimes a problem that people run into. And that problem is that they may forget a certain aspect. And the main one that they often forget is the increment. Let's say you create a loop, you put a lot of code inside of that loop and um, or inside of the while loop. And uh, you just, you know, you finish a long algorithm, you're happy, you're done, but then you forget to have your counter variable increment. Well, what's going to happen? Well, because your counter variable is not changing by anything, it's just going to infinitely run. It's going to be an infinite loop. And that's something that we want to avoid. However, there's something in Java and in almost every programming language that is a counterpart to the while loop that makes this a little bit easier. And that is called a for loop. That is called a for loop. And what a for loop does is it repeats code for a certain number of times, right? It repeats it for a certain number of times. 
So what do I do here? I first write my keyword for, right? The keyword for my for loop is for. And then I have parentheses. What do I actually put inside of my parentheses? Well, it's actually the exact same three parts that we identified in green on this loop. You have your initialization of a counter variable, which keeps track of the actual number of times your loop ran. Then second, you have the condition for the counter variable, or what does the counter variable need to reach before my loop stops running? And then I have the increment, or how much that counter increases uh, each time the loop iterates. So that is what goes in the parentheses. First, I have my counter initialization, or init. This is the first thing that happens. It is equivalent to this right here. You're creating a new variable to keep track of the number of times your loop runs. Then this is followed by a semicolon. The second thing you put is your condition. Is the condition. And the condition is equal to this section right here inside of the while loop. When do you want or at what point does your counter variable need to reach before your loop stops repeating? So you put your condition second, and then you put your semicolon here. And then the third thing you have is the increment. The increment. And the increment is your last section of your for loop header. Right, the header is going to be this part right here. And the increment is equal to what is over here at the bottom of, or in, at the last line inside of our while loop in the example shown previously. So those are the three components of your for loop header. And then you have your, your, open, your open brace and your closed brace. And then inside is where you repeat your code. So repeat, repeating code here, just like that. Let me show you an example, okay? So this is a for loop. It has all three components and I, have, and I color coded it for you so it's easy for you to see, right? I have my initialization part which initializes my counter variable is exactly equal to what I did with the while loop in i equals zero. Then I have my condition, which is that i is less than 10. So the loop repeats while my counter is less than 10. And then the third part of the loop is how much I increase my counter by each time my loop repeats. And in this case, because I do i plus plus, it's an increment of one, right? So now, Let's see how many times does this loop actually repeat, or what is the output of this loop? Well, the first thing I want to actually point out before we do that is that when I say system.out.print instead of system.out.println, this doesn't add a new line every time um, it actually repeats. So it, it keeps, it keeps um, writing these asterisks in the same line. So I'll just, I'll keep a note of this on the side, so system dot out dot print doesn't doesn't adding a line break or like a new line every time it repeats at the end okay all right so now knowing that let's try to figure out what the output of this variable of this loop is so the first thing is I start off with i equals zero, right? So I'll keep track of what my i equals. So here, i equals zero. And for i equals zero, I print out one asterisk like this, right? One time. And then, then right, I go to the next portion of the loop. And the next is i is equal to whatever previously right? And then you add the actual increment. 
So because I'm adding one as my increment, the next value for my counter is one. And so at this point, I also print out another asterisk. Then I do it again because I'm adding one as my increment, i equals two. And then I put another asterisk. Then I increment again, i equals three. And I have another asterisk. And of course, this keeps repeating because this condition is still true here, right? What, a zero is less than 10, one is less than 10, two is less than 10, and three is less than 10. So it still keeps on going. Then I add again to my increment, i equals four. Is four less than 10? It is. So then I can print out, I can print out my output here, okay? And then I repeat it again, right? I add one to my increment and I put an asterisk. Five is less, or then I can add one to five, which is six, and six is still less than 10, so I repeat it again. I equals six, right here, I put an asterisk. And then again, I equals seven, I put an asterisk. In fact, I'm going to move this entire thing over so I don't run off the page. Then, I plus one or seven plus one is equal to eight. So I equals eight. And because eight is less than 10 still, it satisfies the condition. I print another asterisk. And then again, eight plus one equals nine, right? Is nine less than 10? It is. So now there is an asterisk. And then I go and I add one to I. I equals 10 right? Is 10 less than 10? 10 is not less than 10. So now my condition, my condition is now no longer true. And because it's no longer true, that indicates the end of the loop. The loop's body does not run. So if you look at my output, I have one, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten asterisks. So this repeated a total of ten times. This loop repeated ten times. And it therefore it did it outputted ten asterisks. Because it went from zero to nine and it included a zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those all counted. All right. Now before I want before I go to the, my next example, I want to go back up here where I had my while loop, right? Where I had an i equals zero um, as my variable. And then I had a while loop that at that while i is less than five, I'm going to add one to it, right? And then I have some code here. Let's try to convert this over to a for loop because you can convert very easily between the different types of loops very often, especially from while to for loop or from for loop to while loop, right? So what I would do is I have a for loop. And of course, this is for your own practice to kind of get comfortable with writing loops because that's going to be a very important part for the exam. Right. The first thing I do is, again, step one, I initialize my counter. Here I said in i equals zero and inside of my for loop, I can also say int i equals zero. Right. And then I put a semicolon here. Then over here, I have my condition for the counter variable. I is less than five. So over here, I put my condition i less than five. And then I lastly have my increment right over here, which is i plus plus, or I am using, I'm incrementing i up by one. So I can say i plus plus, just like that. And then I have my open and close parentheses, just like my while loop. And then I have my code, code blocks. So you can actually see how much more concise a for loop is compared to the while loop. 
what I did in the while loop in three lines, I, I did in one line. And so it's very, it's very, very useful when you're actually trying to repeat a certain number of times, you want to use a for loop instead of a while loop. And in fact, another thing that's very useful about using a for loop is you won't forget to do your increment. Well, you may forget, but it's much less easy to forget um, doing a for loop to add your increment as the third part than doing a while loop, writing all of your code, and then forgetting at the end to increment your counter variable. While loops, it is much more easier to make that infinite loop error mistake. And in a for loop, you just have to make sure that all three of your parts of your header are included, and then that's it. So definitely, if you want to repeat code for a certain number of times, again, keyword for a certain number of times, it's definitely recommended to use a for loop, okay? So we went over that example. Now I want to go over a second example, and this one's pretty short. But I, this time I'm starting, instead of my counter at zero, I'm starting my counter at 10, right? So my initial, my initial value for i is 10. And my output, because i is greater than zero, 10 is greater than zero, I print out an asterisk, right? But then this time my increment is not increasing by one, but is actually subtracting by two. So this time, my counter variable becomes 8. Is 8 greater than 0? It is. So I add an asterisk, right? And then I do it again. I take i and I subtract 2 from it. So now i equals 6. Is 6 greater than 0? It is. So I do an asterisk. I repeat again. I do i or I do six minus two, and that equals four. Is four greater than zero? It is. So therefore, I print out an asterisk. And then here, is is i equal to two? Right, because uh, four minus two is two. Is two greater than zero? It is. Therefore, there is an asterisk. And then lastly, i equals. i equals 2 minus 2, which is 0. Is 0 greater than 0? It is not. Therefore, the body of the loop is not run, and there is no output. So you can see here, there are only five asterisks that print out. All right, and now we get to the last example, and the last example is going to be the um, a little bit more challenging. We're this time putting loops inside of loops. And this is what is known as a nested for loop. And this is the last example that I'm going to be going over today. I have a loop inside of another loop. This looks very crazy, but let's try it, right? So if we look at the header here, right, of my first for loop, what's inside of my first for loop is going to repeat four times, right? Why do I know that? Well, I know that my i equals 0, right, as my initial state, and I add 1 each time. So actually, this, sorry, I meant 3 times. So this repeats 3 times. i equals 0, right, and then i equals 1, because I'm adding 1, and i equals 2. I add 1. Because once I hit i equals 3, right, that is no longer, that no longer satisfies the condition. So my loop is going to be repeating three times. And you can generally see this, that if your counter starts at zero and it's less than a number and you're adding one, it's going to repeat the same amount of times as this number. But it's very important to, before you make that assumption, that you check to make sure that, it, that they didn't trick you and it's not less than or equal to rather than less than. And you also need to check to make sure that your counter is still increasing by only one. So I know that this is going to be repeating three times. The outer loop is going to be repeating three times. And then my inner loop goes from zero to four, right? i equals zero, i equals one, i equals two, and i equals three. This is going to be repeating four times. So this loop repeats four times. 
And when I say it repeats four times, I mean that it's going to repeat four times each time the outer loop is run because I, I do my loop this first time, right? The first iteration of the outer loop, right? Then I have to run the inner loop four times and then I repeat the outer loop, which repeats the inner loop four times. I repeat the outer loop, which runs the inner loop four times. So in the end, right, if you do the math and the multiplication, you're going to be running your inner loop a total of 12 times. But let's see how this works. So on the first iteration, and I'll, and I'll do this in blue so it's easier, easier for you to see. On the first iteration, so the first iteration of my for loop, of my outer for loop, I then go to my inner for loop. And the first thing I do is I print out an asterisk, right? Except I print out an asterisk four times because this inner loop is repeating a total of four times. We already figured that out. And then the loop is finished and I do system.out.print line. When I do this, this prints a new line. This prints a new line. So if, if you notice, I didn't put any text in here. That's okay, because I'm just printing a straight new line, right? And so now this, the first time of my outer loop or the first iteration of my outer loop is done. But then I have to repeat the outer loop a second time, a second time. And I'll do this in a different color, a second time. And on the second time, I now run my inner loop. And because my inner loop repeats four times, I add four asterisks. And if you're wondering again why, um, remember here, when I did print line, I move down to a, another line. So this is really like a new line is here, right? It, it, it moved it down below. And now I do that again. Now that my for loop is done, my inner for loop is done, I then will run the, the, um, the new line. So that is now the completion of the second iteration of the outer loop. And now I do my last iteration of the outer loop. And again, first I run the inner for loop four times. And then I will do the print line, which will then create, well, this will add a new line below. So the conclusion of this particular program, this nested for loop is this right here. I print out a three by four or a four by three, depending on how you look at it, a, um, a table, right? I have four columns and three rows. The number of rows I had were equal to the, the outer for loop and the number of columns I had were equal to the inner for loop in terms of how many times they repeat. So nested for loops are probably the most complicated and nested loops in general are going to be the most complicated because you have to, you have to think about that you're repeating the, the inside of the for loop and then you're repeating the entire for loop. And by repeating the entire for loop, the outer for loop, you're repeating the inner one again. So you're ju it's just a lot of repeating and a lot of repeating, but um, definitely practice, it, uh, practice makes perfect in trying to find out the output for such things of nested loops. And um, the, the actual AP exam, as even written on the College Board's website, this particular uh, unit makes up a good portion, for a little over 20% of the entire exam. And they say that, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty big part of the exam. And a lot of the questions will have nested for loops in them. And they're going to try to trick you in the header you know, in the header things that they use. So it's very important to t take it slow and just kind of think about all of the different parts and, um, you know, slow it down, write it, if you, write it out if you need to, like I did up here where I wrote down the values for the actual counter variable. If that's what it takes to make it a little bit more, um, to make it a little bit easier for you to understand, especially while you're practicing and getting really good at reading loops, then I definitely recommend doing that. But it's important to know the difference between, um, you know, your while loops and your for loops and how kind of you use while loops in certain cases 
and then you use for loops in certain cases. And you use for loops again for repeating for a certain number of times. And you're generally actually going to see for loops much more commonly than while loops. Um, however, uh, definitely you want to still know both and you should be able to use both, especially for the new 2020 um, kind of setup for the AP exam being all FRQs. That means that you're going to have to, rather than even reading loops, you're going to have to be able to apply loops in different situations. And again, in the next part of this video is where I'm going to be going over a practice test that I made specifically for this particular unit. And so if you are a 2020 um, test taker, it's again, even more important to really know what you're doing in terms of the FRQ. The FRQ I made on this particular practice exam, especially compared to my old practice exams, this one really models the exact way. Like I looked at released FRQs and I even copied the format that the document's in. So it looks very similar to how a actual AP exam um, FRQ will look. So we'll be going over that. And then obviously it's still very important, even though you may not be taking the F, the uh, multiple choice section, it's very important to still look at the multiple choice section to kind of help your understanding. And then definitely if you're not taking the exam in 2020 or something even changes in 2020, then or, you know, if you're preparing for an in-class test, looking at the multiple choice section will definitely benefit you. All right, so thanks for watching. I definitely recommend uh, going to part two of this video, which will have the actual practice test. The practice test is in a link in the description below, as well as the PDF that we wrote our notes on here. That will also be in the description below. So feel free to you know download it or do whatever uh, you want to do with it. It's definitely a very good resource in case you need to you know look back on your notes or look back on something that you may not understand. Um, obviously, timestamps are on the side of this video, so you'll be able to see, you know, if you need to skip to one specific part of the video in the future. And um, I'll be in the comment section in case you guys need any um, need any help or have any questions that you'd like to get answered. All right. So as always, thanks for watching. Uh, please, uh, please like and subscribe for more content if you liked it. And as always, thanks for watching.